State of Council meeting in order. If you would, stand with me, observe a moment of silence, and then I will lead you in the Pledge of Allegiance. Be seated. I want to welcome you to tonight's City Council meeting as well as those that might be watching on cable TV 7. The next item is the consent agenda. Are there items that need to be pulled? Seeing none, I would accept a motion for approval. So moved. Is there a second? Second. A roll call, please. Councilman Cobell? Aye. Councilman Lettucey? Aye. Councilman Fowler? Aye. Councilman Carter? Aye. Councilman Edmondson? Aye. Councilman Bowman? Aye. Carried unanimously. Next, we have a presentation on the 40 Highway Corridor Plan by Mr. Britt Palmberg of Design Workshop, who is working with the Mid-America Regional Council, will come and make that presentation. So, Britt, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Good evening. Good to see you all. I have seen some of you guys at the uh, public meetings we had for 40 Highway during the fall and uh, summer back of last year. I see some familiar faces, but some haven't seen, so some of this will be review, some new. I'm just going to go over some issues we've been discussing and where we're going from here on the 40 Highway Plan. So, with this, all right. All right. So, as some of you all may know, I think many of you may know, um, this, this is a joint effort planned with Midway Regional Council. It's actually jointly done with uh, Independence, Kansas City, Missouri, Blue Springs, and also Lee Summit, and technically Lake Tapawingo as well. All the cities along 40 Highway between basically Adams Dairy and out towards Green Valley and towards uh, the center of the city. It actually technically follows Highway 40, and then once you reach I-70, it follows 31st Street on into uh, Prospect and on towards uh, Blue Star Watkins Parkway, which is where 40 historically actually went into the city. So this is one of several corridors you may know being planned for in the metropolitan area by mid Regional Council um, over the last year and ongoing here. 40 Highway is one of them, Rock Island down in Lee Summit is another one, uh, North Oak, State Avenue, over in Kansas they're dealing with uh, Shining Mission Parkway and also with Metcalf. So a variety of planning efforts have been put forth by mid Regional Council uh, throughout the area here the last year or so. It's part of the Creating Sustainable Places program, which they actually like to think about in terms of three major themes, uh, creating vibrant, connected, and green districts and locations here throughout the metropolitan area. So vibrant mean areas that have more vitality, obviously, given the name, a uh, variety of land uses, access to jobs, places to work, places to shop, uh, connected, connected in terms of not just vehicular access, but also for by people bicycling, people walking, people taking transit, and then green, you know, more sustainable development, uh, more efficiently uses the land, better uses the infrastructure, uh, plans for, you know, environmentally safer ways of planning going forward. So they basically, you know, come up with the idea of planning for these various quarters and various districts to create a different paradigm, a different example for how future development may go in the metropolitan area. And if you look at that map, a lot of these quarters are actually some of the older ones in the metropolitan areas. So State Avenue, 40 Highway, these are areas that were developed back in the 50s, 60s, maybe even before then, before outer areas like Lee Summit or South Overland Park developed. And a lot of what uh, this is all about is basically trying to retrofit these older parts of the metropolitan area, trying to present them for an opportunity to direct growth maybe back towards the center as opposed to strictly going out towards the edge, right? So it's trying to, you know, there's two many different aspects of the planning effort, but it's planning for, you know, strengthening the, cur the core of the urban area, of the metropolitan area. Um, out here in Blue Springs, obviously, you're at the east end, so you're kind of at the, the edge of the metropolitan area. And so the key here is how do we tie in with the overall metropolitan area via Highway 40 and so forth. So the study area, again, goes from 31st and Prospect and then follows 40 Highway out through Independence and on into Blue Springs. And uh, we've done a number of quarter studies like this in other parts of the country and, and here in the middle of the country as well. Uh, this one is about as long as I've seen. It also is fairly diverse. You know, obviously the part in the city is more of an urban city street. And, but even if you, as you can follow 40 out into more of the suburban part of Jackson County, the, uh, the street dimensions, the character are kind of similar from uh, Independence out through towards 
470, but of course, as you come out towards Blue Springs here, the highway actually separates, becomes more like a rural highway, really. And then it comes back into towards being a city street here as you approach 7 Highway, and then technically becomes a two-lane highway as it currently stands out towards Adams Dairy Parkway and it's headed towards uh, Green Valley. So it's kind of a multi-headed monster that you're trying to plan for. You know, I think all the cities have been grappling with how do we use this resource. It was a major infrastructure, major transportation corridor and still is, but it has some issues, of course, with vacancies, with uh, kind of underperforming economic uses, especially as you head towards the west from Blue Springs, Independence, and Kinsey, Missouri. Um, places like that. So we're planning for overall strategies and themes for the corridor, but of course we're planning for four focus areas of which you have one here at uh, 40 Highway and Dairy Parkway. The others are at uh, 40 Highway Nolan Road in Independence where there's a lot of you know fairly vacant shopping centers. Uh, 40 Highway and Blue Ridge Cutoff which is kind of a mishmash of different land uses and then 31st and Prospect which is a fairly you know well-defined urban fabric but there's a lot of you know issues of redevelopment with you know, just a variety of issues there that they're planning for in, in Kansas City, Missouri. So again, we're promoting goals to promote economic development along all of 40 and especially here at these focus areas that the communities are planning for as part of this effort. Uh, looking for transportation ideas. Um, in, obviously in Blue Springs, we're looking for ideas here for the 40 Highway Adams Dairy Parkway area. And then coming out of this for Blue Springs specifically, a lot of these ideas coming out of this plan the idea here is to help, you know, provide some momentum and some ideas that could be used as you do your comprehensive plan here in the next several months, as you all are starting that here fairly shortly, right? So again, you have development, land uses, all modes of transportation, access management, and then overall aesthetic improvements. You know, how does the road look? How does it provide a better uh, front door of the city, a better, uh, better window dressing to the city as people come in? So... So there's some key trends that have been influencing the overall discussion about corridors here, including 40, 40 Highway, State Avenue, Shiny Mission Parkway. Um, this is true in Kansas City and throughout the United States. You have a lot of baby boomers who, of course, are by each day more and more reaching age 65 and going into retirement or at least into retirement age. And a lot of them are already are what you would call empty nesters, don't have kids at home. So uh, a lot of those folks are in homes that are bigger than they need. Um, the trend of folks in that demographic, you know, there's different segments and they have different preferences, but over time, they're gonna need less house for their daily lives, right? So some people will move to senior housing facilities. Some people might move to apartments or townhomes or what you might call villa or patio homes. You've heard those terms, I'm sure. Uh, but those people, you know, empty nesters, they're looking for the same qualities that everyone else is. They're looking for, if they're gonna move out of their current house, for example, move to a place that has a lot of amenities, you know, places to shop, places to dine. If um, you see us repeatedly around the country that if, if uh, MP nesters relocate out of their house to some development, well, some will move to your senior housing facility that's off in the suburban areas, but a lot of times they'll be moving to areas that have more, you know, things to do, you know, more fun things to do. They're kind of like single folks again. They don't have families. They can be more mobile. They're looking for things to do in their free time. So, for example, you see college towns that are actually a pretty big destination for uh, senior citizens and retirees moving there. Columbia, Missouri, Lawrence, Kansas, they're seeing a lot of senior move back. There's a lot of the college stuff which ties in. And so this is a big market in terms of potential shift. And so the question for these communities is, how can we plan these districts to you know, perhaps market to that segment as that becomes increasingly dominant? Uh, younger adults, we also find that uh, you see what's happening in Kansas City, Missouri with the crossroads, things down by the river market. Um, younger folks are tending to marry later, and they're tending to want to locate in areas that have a lot more fun things to do. They have, uh, you know, more compact land uses, smaller places to live, places like that. So the suburbs, you know, they, historically in Kansas City, obviously, like most places, you have the traditional single-family house, you know, detached house in the suburbs. If you look at the data that's actually projected out 30 years by Mid-America Regional Council, the segments that are going to comprise the vast majority of household uh, growth here actually are going to be the older demographic and the younger, younger demographic. The traditional, you know, parents, one or two parents and kids is going to be a pretty small share of the growth the next 30 years if you just look at the demographic trends. And so it's also a realization for suburbs like Blue Springs Independence that may be offering a different product set beyond just a typical suburban house with so and typical layout. It's a good strategy from a marketing perspective. You know, Blue Springs has the advantage over your neighbors to the west in that you have seen more growth, you're in a better economic footing than, you know, independence in areas to the west. I think you all probably realize that. You have good schools, you have a lot of the good, you know, bases for growth here. You know, you have good, um, 
good schools. You have areas of growth here with MIP, Missouri Innovation Park, here on I-70. A lot of advantages here, but if you look at the demographic trends in the surveys, you know, a large segment of households here nationally and in the United and in uh, Kansas City prefer places that have more mixed uses, more walkable, um, you know, different household types, for example, than what we've seen in the past. So again, it translates into a higher demand going forward than what we've seen for townhomes, villa homes, apartments, uh, really for developments that could be more resembling a downtown district of old, you know, like this, like here in downtown Blue Springs or any number of downtowns you've seen around the area. You know, example districts that people often point to when they talk about these ideas of great places that have stood the test of time, which is really what Minnebaker Regional Council is trying to promote, are places that, you know, even 80 years later, all the different tenants may have changed, but people realize that that was really created as a great district. It's really, all the bones of it are still there many decades later. So downtown Lee Summit is an example here in Jackson County, Brookside, Waldo. Uh, there's some developments that are newer that are cited as good examples like Northgate's a little development in North Kansas City, I think where Highway 9 <coughs> splits off there at the bottom of the hill. That's kind of an infill development closer in with a wider variety of housing types. You know, there's also the more suburban, larger format uh, developments like Park Place in Leewood, Zona Rosa, and the Country Club Plaza. That's an older example, but those are also cited as examples of what they're trying to get at here with Minnebaker Regional Council. You know, wider variety of land uses, more amenities, a cooler place to go, districts that really are destination locations. So, some of this is a review for you all, but I wanted to cover the background. So we're reviewing a bit of what we talked about with the community at a meeting back before the holidays. Um, we'll preview upcoming the final meeting for this effort, which is going to come in March. But essentially, the first meeting we had got input from the public here in Blue Springs and the other communities along the corridor concerning things they'd like to see big picture for the corridor, right? And people wanted to see more land uses, more diversity of land uses. They were fine with somewhat higher levels of density. They wanted to see Highway 40 become more multimodal, meaning more than just vehicular traffic. And then we got into the second meeting here, and we started talking more about the actual nodes here at Adams Dairy Parkway, at Nolan Road, so on and so forth. And uh, these diagrams have actually been, I guess, posted at City Hall for the last few months, and um, you've gotten some comments back. And in speaking with the city staff, it seems like the general sense in Blue Springs is that, you know, the diagrams we showed are pretty much on target with what might meet with the goals of the community with regards to that area around Adams Dairy and 40, but we wanted to go over it a little bit here with you in person and, you know, get some comments from you all and, and just get the word out about this, you know. So option, there's three, basically three options here as you look at 40 Highway and Adams Dairy Parkway. Right now, the existing, you know, land use designations and so forth call for light industrial on the south side of 40 and also west of Adams Dairy because there's an old, I guess, what, a asphalt or, yeah aggregate plant, right? So it was basically light industrial south of 40, but you have the MIP, the Missouri Innovation Park there to the north and east, and that's shaded in, in light blue there as kind of a more research park or business park idea. And then as you get to, that's, that's option one. Option two says, well, we should, you know, maybe still have a greater emphasis on business park uses, especially north of 40. You see the northwest quadrant there of Adams Dairy and 40 that has a blue coloring. But it basically said, well, south of 40, there's potential here for more of a mixed-use district to be created. And um, this is kind of the mid-ground in terms of densities that we're talking about here. But a couple of key things to point out that um, we'll talk about more here in a couple of minutes. See a couple, whoops, that's the wrong button. How do I go back? Okay. Just get that off the screen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. So if you look at the white dot there on Highway 40, it says potential BRT station, that's bus rapid transit. We'll talk about that in a minute. There's the potential for, as we see it, to have a you know, more express bus or bus rapid transit line that comes out Highway 40 all the way from the city and could go down this alignment. Could be a destination location for development, a key drop-off point for commuters, things like that. On the south, we've highlighted in the commuter rail line. The uh, rail line that exists there right now is one of the alignments that the county government's been talking about for commuter rail, which would run out from the heart of Kansas City out through this line that kind of meanders further north, actually through Independence and so forth, and then dives down through here as it goes east towards Odessa. So um, I know you have actually two possible stops I think we've identified and talked about for commuter rail. One's here in downtown Blue Springs, but there's also a potential one we think could be put in here 
at 40 in Amesbury Parkway, which really makes a lot of sense because <coughs> If, uh, if the uh, MIP really developed into a full-on uh, business campus, um, business park, you know, you think about Research Triangle Park in North Carolina, you know, if it reaches full potential, it's going to be a pretty key employment destination for folks. You know, so somebody could, in theory, be living downtown Kansas City or in Independence or anywhere along the line, just take this thing out in the morning, obviously. It also creates opportunities for development, so what you call transit-oriented development, right? So if you have the BRT on one side and Peterbilt on the other, you're kind of, you know, bookended there. And there's little lines in there and the colors basically say that there could be somewhat of a district, you know, maybe not as big as a downtown, but some district that has places to eat, shop. Um, some of your daily errands might be served by, you know, just get, going to and from commuter rail and so forth. Could be some housing there as well. We basically color it as mixed use, you know, somewhat higher density. Meaning you could have, mixed use means in terms of the coloring here, you could have housing, you could have some employment. Um, office, you know, basically any kind of land use could go there uh, except industrial, right? And then to the east and west, it called for more um, neighborhood mixed use, and we did leave the uh, Blue Springs bus yard intact there on this diagram. Figure that's going to be there for at least 20, 30 years more. <laughs> And basically, option three is some of the same idea, except it also calls for this mixed-use idea stretching more up into the uh, northwestern quadrant of 40 Highway and Amsdary Parkway. So it's a, just a little bigger footprint of mixed-use compared to option two. But if you see, you know, if you see the the um, the um, commuter rail and BRT stops, you also notice a few other things there, like little dotted green lines. The key there being there could be walking paths and open space connections, jogging path, things like that but that would connect up from the commuter rail line up to MIP and really just help to increase the marketability of MIP overall. You know, I think the overall conclusion of the team and it, I think it's common, kind of common sense is that assuming the city's not having to pay for a ton of the commuter rail, this comes in, uh, it only increases the value of MIP, increases the marketability of MIP over time. You know, the question now is that most of MIP I think is planned more for up north here towards Adams Dairy Landing or Adams, Dairy, Adams Landing. Uh, the question is, can more of it stretch down towards the south and some of the areas that have been splotched out in purple, right? So it's a lot of acreage right now, but the light rail or the uh, commuter rail could actually help stimulate more development um, over time. There's a close up there. I'm sure many of you have seen those diagrams there. But if you look back at our diagrams, we, we followed some of the same conventions. We kept the golf course in place. We drew in some of the same roads they drew in in their plan that connected basically from 40 up towards uh, that little loop road there by Amsterdam Parkway. We basically tried to integrate with the plan they had in place right now. And the whole idea behind this uh, land use kind of diagram here, we have three options that we're hoping to get to by the final meeting through input from you all and just, you know, Commons to City staff has arrived at a preferred plan uh, for land use here that we would talk about at the final meeting and then assuming there's enough support from the public at the final meeting, we'd feel confident putting forth a recommendation that a land use diagram like this would probably go forth into the comprehensive plan for the city of Blue Springs, right? So in that sense, we've already knocked down one of the pins <coughs> that you'll be considering here as you talk about the comp plan, because you know you have land use and many other aspects to talk about, but this is a pretty key area for the city. And so, you know, once we go over the slideshow here, we'd like to Perhaps get your thoughts about Adams Dairy and see if we were on target or, you know, just get your input here. Or we can stop if you'd like to along the way as well. So we also showed the public examples of, you know, mixed-use business parks. There's some of the, you know, eye candy here. The idea that you could have somewhat higher density, it's more of a streetscape, it's more of a walkable uh, business park. You know, uh, Corporate Woods in Overland Park is an example of the paradigm from the 70s and 80s. Land use is very separated. You basically had to get in your car. If you're in college, you, you in theory could jog over from your office building over to College Boulevard and get a bite to eat over lunch, but usually people just would drive. idea here is if you have more services and uh, places to live integrate in with employment centers, it only increases the marketability and increases really is the usefulness of that development overall. You know, so this is an example actually here of a project that, well, actually I, I helped with myself about five, six years ago. Um, it's basically an old 1970s office park outside Philadelphia with just your typical office building just kind of plunked down on 
you know, circular roads and so forth. And about six years ago, they approached us and said, well, we really want to integrate in retail, integrate places to shop, eat, even to work with apartments and so forth in here. Now, it went dark during the recession, but now we're back on the job here the last few months, and they're moving forward with this. And this is a pretty traditional REIT that's pretty conservative, you know, you know, publicly owned and everything else. And so these ideas are moving forward when you talk about business parks. So it's really kind of the main thrust we're talking about here in terms of ideas that we've come up with and talk with the public about for 40 Highway. You know, as we get down towards the eventual plan for something like 40 Highway and Adams Dairy and, you know, we discuss with city staff what our final product may visually look like, we could just, you know, leave it at the bubble level and have that fold into the comp plan. This is an example of a quarter plan we did over in the St. Louis suburbs in West County on Manchester Road or, or Highway 40. It's the old Route 66. If you get to the you know, final <coughs> level of detail for a quarter plan or for a focus area in a quarter plan, you actually can lay out where parallel streets might go, where civic plazas might be, even where buildings might go. So these are not intended to be, in this case, for Manchester Road, absolutely definitively where everything must go precisely, but it helps guide future development RFPs, helps guide future site planning opportunities that developers bring forward. So the idea here, some of the main themes, and you've seen this in places like Overland Park and Lee Summit, that you know, if there's buildings that are inline retail, for example, maybe they should be out near the street and not just have a sea of parking. You know, ideas of having a little perpendicular main street there. This is a, in the community of Ellisville. There's a huge gaping, vacant uh, car lot and vacant apartments in here, and so it's a pretty key area for of, uh, of, of having their first main street first downtown. So this is how a corridor plan could eventually be illustrated for an area like 40 and and uh, Amsterdam Parkway. Now on to transportation, some of the main things we've talked about and I already tipped my hat a few minutes ago. Um, this is really just the start. We'll talk about where this goes here in a few minutes, but you know, 40 Highway surprisingly has really never been planned for in the same way State Avenue or Metcalf have the last five, 10 years, if some of you are familiar with those efforts. You know, Overland Park went through a big planning effort for Metcalf that really is a really long-term vision of what might happen along there. But springing from that, um, Minarec Regional Council, along with those cities, actually got Tiger funding and is doing an express bus out from the plaza through Mission through Overland Park. That's now, you know, aligned with Metcalf Avenue. State Avenue, same thing there. They did a whole quarter plan. Now they have express bus coming in all the way from the Legends and towards downtown Kansas City. But 40 Highway, this is the first time anyone's actually done any planning for 40 Highway out all this way. But you know, given the width of the right-of-way, and it, it varies somewhat as you go from one town to the other, um, just big picture, when you look at 40 Highway, um, it's still going to remain a, you know, a major road. We don't see it narrowing down. It's not going to be some narrow little main street, right? But there's enough right-of-way there with the shoulders and with even space off to the side that kind of modifies back and forth as you go along that um, it's a pretty obvious route for a future bus rapid transit line. Like the Max in Kansas City, that's a picture of the Max on Troost. Like the Connects line, which is going to be going out through uh, Mission and Overland Park. And those basically have more defined stops. They have you know, better recognizable buses. Uh, they have better electronic <coughs> signage. So, you know, idea being it's, it's not like light rail, but instead of stopping every two blocks, for example, there'll be more defined stop in Blue Springs, one Independence. You know, every few miles means you can get downtown faster and just more easy to know where to, where to find the bus and hopefully faster buses and more frequent headways as well. So that's kind of the trend here. You look at transit in the United States, things like light rail like they have in St. Louis, way, way expensive. And as we know, money's going to be very tight for a long, long time. But bus rapid transit is a way to, to do this in a, well, there's just a variety, different variety of bus rapid transit, but the, uh, the BRT or express bus there on Metcalf, I think they did it all for about $10 million, which is a fair amount of money, but for that length all the way from South Overland Park into the plaza, you know, it's not a lot compared to spending money on big interchanges and massive upgrades of freeways, right? So it's a more affordable way to get mass transit accrued in the metropolitan area. Now, one key thing we've talked about in terms of how the land use interacts with transportation <coughs> is that when uh, communities and agencies like ATA, KCATA um, out of the city, you know, go looking for perhaps help for funding for things like BRT. There are certain metrics that the FTA looks for, right? And that means having density of housing, density of employment identified near the stops for BRT. If you can show a plan that's been articulated that helps guide development towards that BRT, 
it just you know gives the BRT a better chance of drawing better ridership, of actually getting better return on the public investment. And so that's where the whole idea of density comes in. And density in many suburban environments is considered to be a you know, frankly, a dirty word, right? People sometimes think of, oh, it's really beaten up old apartments and so forth. And so what we've tried to show in images, not so much tonight, but in our presentation boards at public meetings and so forth, is the idea that you can have developments that are higher quality, um, you know, well-articulated, higher quality stuff that still has some degree of density to it. And the other thing we've conveyed is that if you just look around the region and look around even Independence, Blue Springs, Lee Summit, Overland Park, there's many examples of actually um, apartments, garden homes, townhomes that are higher density than people think. You know, sometimes we don't really get into the numbers talk with the folks here, but 10 housing units per acre, well, that's not too dissimilar from your typical suburban apartment complex, right? The question is how you design it, how you orient it around a, a bus stop to better support ridership and encourage people to live there. That's the other question. Um, the other metric people look at is 20 employees per acre. Most suburban locations like an Overland Park, Mission, it's going to be pretty hard to reach that many employees per acre, but out here with MIP, you actually could make a pretty big argument for how commuter rail and BRT would be pretty viable out here. So those are images there of, of the, uh, the Joe Connects. That's the line that's going to be going out, basically Johnson Drive to Metcalf and then cut south. Um, there's defined transit stops like the one on the bottom there in downtown Overland Park. There's actually full-on kind of multimodal transit stations they're going to have in downtown Mission. You know, we have a lot of bus facilities and other bus lines will feed in, things like that. So it's not just the one line. So you can see there on the left, it, the images there show better done up uh, bus shelters and so forth. You know, most stops on 40 just have a sign and that's all. You know, if you want to wait for the bus, you're, you're kind of out there getting splashed on and there's really no protection from anything, right? This is basically just souping up the transit idea better. So, you know, a station area for express bus service, you could have a bus stop off there, you could have buildings develop closer to the bus stop itself. That's the whole idea of some of these, you know, plans that the American Regional Council is talking about. So the commuter rail, you know, we've mentioned that already. Again, it's going to go on the Kansas City Southern tracks. Um, commuter rail has a little higher uh, threshold for what they like to see in terms of density of housing and employment, usually 20 housing units per acre or 25 employees per acre. So it's somewhat higher. It's not massively higher. So that's another consideration as you look at commuter rail. And I imagine you all have you know, talked with the county, and the county's pretty talking a lot about that right now. So you've probably seen some of this stuff before. That's the map of the line. So other ideas that we've been discussing are an idea of, you know, bus rapid transit going forward here along 40, but also the idea of creating somewhat of a parkway on 40. Um, you know, the parkway idea is, you know, pretty, pretty strong in Kansas City's heritage. Ward Parkway, all the parkway system in the city obviously came out of all the planning of that city for the last 150 years. And a lot of suburbs on both sides of the state line, you know, plan for these kind of nicely done parkways. Even you know, Adams Street Parkway, you know, has nicer lighting, has some places to sit, walking trails, things like that. The well, idea here is that paired with that transit idea, 40 could become just a better, you know, parkway over time. So parts of 40, you could actually convert the median into more of a landscape median with trees. You can put, um, you know, places to bike and so forth along the side of Highway 40. Um, so here's some examples here. This on the left is um, that's actually, I think, Shoal Creek up in Kansas City North. On the right is, um, that's Renner Road. But these are basically examples of parkways from other suburbs here in the metropolitan area that, um, you know, just have, you know, not huge amount of amenities, but they have nicer plantings. They have some sculpture, things like that. You know, there's basically ideas. That's Prairie Star Parkway on the left. That's a nice bike path there along the side of that parkway. There's enough right-of-way here along 40 that even though today people don't think about biking on 40 in the forefront of their mind, it could become a more viable way to get across the county from one end to the other. I guess actually when you think about it right now, a lot of people, some people, if you just drive them down 40 every day, you do, they do ride their bike, but they're riding on the highway shoulder, and it's kind of dangerous. So really, how can we improve that condition? So where we go from here, um, and this means not just for this next meeting, but globally, where does 40 Highway go? Um, there's a whole lexicon of uh, STP and AA and so forth, all the transportation guys talk about. But essentially, this is just a really broad conceptual discussion with the community at this point. 
if independence, Blue Springs, KCMO come forth and say, you know, coming out of this plan, this was, you know, not the be all end all detailed plan over 15 miles. We had a lot of good ideas here. We want to go forth talking more about express buses, for example. Then out of this, you would, you know, there's a bit more planning to do. Uh, there's alternatives analysis you could do for BRT. That's actually a procedural thing you have to go through with the authorities to get on the docket for funding <coughs> and actually get it in place with like the FTA and with ATA, right? You could do a more detailed corridor plan for the entire length of 40, which actually would define where access management would be, you know, mile per mile. More detail, like I showed you, for each mile up and down the corridor, whereas at this point we're just doing these focus areas at Adams Dairy, Noland, and so on and so forth. Um, you can actually, coming out of this plan, I think we'll have a lot of recommendations for the city staff about things like parking regulations, sign regulations, some of the more nuts and bolts that they could start to coordinate. We won't actually, we won't actually agree upon what it should be technically among the four cities or five cities, but from there on the next round, they could really just do this without any formalized consultant you know, doing a plan. They can work between different cities and help to coordinate development regula regulations, coordinate signage, things like that. Um, Another thing that could be done coming out of this effort is to actually adopt the ideas of the 40 highway plan that's going to be produced here in the next month or two into your comprehensive plan. And so um, you guys are doing your comprehensive plan this year. That's, you know, <coughs> one easy opportunity to do here in the next several months if the community so wishes. So our final public meeting in March is going to show more of the preferred plan for 40 highway. And this, you know, we'll touch upon, we think, probably bus rapid transit, the commuter rail, ideas for, um, you know, the parkway and better bike access up and down Highway 40 in broad terms. We're not going to define how it works for mile <coughs> per mile, but the broad themes for Highway 40. We're going to talk about the preferred plan for land use for each of these land use nodes, including yours here in Blue Springs at Adams Dairy Parkway. We're going to talk about some of the key implementation, implementation tools that our uh, team has you know, recommended for the communities to go forward with some of which I already alluded to here a few minutes ago. And then we'll, of course, preview some of the things we just talked about, where the effort goes from here. Now, you know, so these alternative ideas for land use, they've been up in City Hall. We've, um, the last meeting, we had a series of questions on a survey. Uh, one thing that, you know, may help us in really zeroing things in for the final meeting is to have folks here from Blue Springs go to the MARC website, mark.org sustainable places all right and if you go in there there's actually a survey for highway for highway 40 and uh, the city you may actually send the links out for the survey to different email lists <coughs> throughout the community here in the next few weeks to get more numerical input concerning what folks like and don't like about some of the ideas put forth in november and here the last several months so that's kind of our little overview of where we've been uh, we hadn't had a chance to meet with you all up till now so i think for now just want to have an open discussion and Q and A. We're all here. Any questions, I'm Mr. Bomber? Any questions, <clears throat> Councilor McCarra? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I want to talk about light rail and commuter rail because for the last two years, I've served on the Regional Rail Coalition with the county. Uh -huh. Susan Culpepper is in the audience. She serves on that committee with me as well. And we've spent a lot of time educationally learning about commuter rail and what the impact would be. Mm -hmm. And we are really trying to save our downtown and build our downtown up. And I know right. this may be a little out of the area of what you want to talk about, but we talk about two stations being on the route for Blue Springs, one in downtown and one by the MIP. Mm -hmm. And everything we've seen on bus versus commuter rail is that, number one, bus is a lot cheaper, but nobody rides it. Commuter rail, the positive side effect is that it spurs development. Mm -hmm. And if we're looking at saving downtown, you're talking about businesses sprouting up around the commuter rail station, uh, perhaps even uh, housing, which we don't really have in, Blue, in downtown Blue Springs, but maybe loft housing might come out of that as a result. Mm -hmm. And then the station by the MIP, as you point out, if that's fully developed, you're going to have a lot of young people who may want to live in Kansas City and then commute to the MIP. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it just, it sounded like in your presentation that it was yay raw bus and not so much for commuter rail and we've spent a lot of time you know looking at that right. and I think you're gonna see a ballot initiative come out of that right. that uh, I think has a good likelihood of passing well I think the commuter rail may very well happen pretty soon obviously everything in the news everything you just mentioned as you look at 40 highway assuming the commuter rail is going and following that existing railway track we looked at the possibilities for 40 what could be on it you know to start with from transportation and brt was the most logical thing to talk about 
Now, whether that takes a priority over commuter rail, that's a whole other question. It, you know, it sounds like the community's heading towards endorsing commuter rail, as what you just, just mentioned, and maybe BRT in four, on 40 is more of a longer term prospect. It is cheaper. The ridership is a little bit less impressive. Um, you know, for the areas to the west of here, you know, commuter rail, as I mentioned, doesn't go through 40 highway independence. It kind of snakes along there and eventually ends up down by the city market. So it's not aligned with some of these corridors like 40, ironically, even though it, in theory, kind of follows I-70, but it snakes around. Um, really, for the communities west of here, BRT be about the only viable transit option here for 40. And with the right-of-way, I think it's something to at least have on the agenda for future discussions. You know, but the question is, to your point, because you know the, the express buses on Metcalf and Shea Mission Parkway are going through some, you know, not massively dense areas, but you know, pretty well built up areas and you know, decent economically, er e decently uh, strong economic areas like Mission, Overland Park, and so forth. Even State Avenue has more people living right by it. Forty, as you go west from here, goes through kind of some unpopulated areas. I think the key for this plan, if it actually went forward, the tougher nut here is over at Noland or Blue Ridge cutoff. You have a lot of open ground that's probably not viable for retail that could be populated with housing and that might support the BRT more. Here with your employment, you're obviously, your hats I think, to your point, right now logically heading towards commuter rail a bit more. So, but we wanted to make sure we drew in the commuter rail and show how it tied in with all that stuff. Mr. Johnson? Yeah, Brett, thanks for coming tonight and thanks for sharing this information. We're really uh, pleased that Mark is studying this corridor and gathering input from the communities. A couple of questions. Um, first of all, an observation. I, I like the idea of the, of the concept of a parkway. And in fact, if you look at 40 Highway in Blue Springs, uh, close to 7 Highway, yeah. um, it's been in place a long time. In fact, uh, maybe over 20 years, the, the council initiated some standards to uh, enclose some ditches, do uh, landscape medians. And um, you know those are very nice standards, and we'd like to see more of that. Mm -hmm question I have uh, some of the the potential and, and I realize long-term uses that have been identified here mm -hmm. would um, re require the acquisition of properties that have a lot of unique and diverse uses right now uh, and some would require cleanup mm -hmm. uh, there's just a lot of work that would need to be done on some of those does this analysis take into consideration support for uh, economic development and whether or not there's a true market for some of these uses um, Mm -hmm. For example, I see some really nice pictures of mixed-use developments, mm -hmm. but I question uh, would, an, would a Metcalf or Null type of mixed-use development really fly and be viable in eastern Jackson County, and does the current um, economic development environment lend itself for that either now or 10 or 15 years from now? Is your so. study looking right. at that and talking to the people who could help yeah. make those decisions? Yeah, we're definitely looking at that and talking to people and trying to nail that down exactly in terms of the final recommendation of what that looks like. Now, to your point, you know, things like Park Place and Leewood and Mission Farms, some of these, you know, higher-end mixed-use developments in Johnson County, well, that may be tougher to get out here. I think the idea demographically of the population change that we talked about, though, means that there's a market for a somewhat higher level of density. Maybe it's not, you know, just a, it's not the highest level of, of um, price point perhaps that's maybe one thing I'd say the other thing it's it's kind of it is long term so I think that that right. vision you see for Adams Dairy Parkway it is somewhat long term demographic trend driven not as much driven by what's going to happen in the next five years ten years I think it's that's going to take some time to your point there's properties down there that need a lot of cleanup and really it's not by 70 it's not obvious to the a uh, person to consider living around this area, they would move there right now or even move their business right now, so it would take some time. But um, you know, given the overall potential for MIP, if MIP reaches its potential, and given the overall you know, growth out here in the eastern part of the county, I think that level of development around there could be supportable. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilman Levesey. Uh, again, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I have not been able to make many of these meetings where it's been discussed, so it's good information. Um, my question is more along the lines of, as Mr. Johnson pointed out, we have several locations of intersection with the 40 corridor right. uh, that are major components of the city, including 7 Highway and Woods Chapel. So I guess why have we kind of shifted the focus to Adams Dairy, and is there any consideration being given to those other two, I guess what you call nodes, right. to, I mean, is it just because it's the least developed or is the most potential, <laughs> or what's kind of the mindset behind focusing so much on that area? Well, this quarter planning effort, 
um, put out by Mid Regional Regional Council is not comprehensive end to end. And so the communities basically realized there wasn't the magnitude of effort here to go study each of them in detail. And essentially the communities chose the ones we looked at here. You know, even when we were, you know, working, working to get the job here with Mark, uh, the NFI Adams Dairy Parkway is like the area of focus here in Blue Springs. Now, so that's more attention is being given to land use plans and kind of thought for that area here in the final plan. Now, the other areas there, we'll be touching upon them. We have questions, for example, I believe in our, our set of questions from November, and we can talk about it in the final meeting as well, in terms of what happens with these other areas of focus. And it's been more like, the questions have been more to the point of, what other areas along 40 would you see as key areas for you know, concentrated development? <coughs> Seven Highway would be an obvious answer, obviously. Woods Chapel as well. But we haven't analyzed exactly what would go into 40 and 7 Highway and 40 and Woods Chapel from a land use perspective. One would hope some of the same ideas might carry along at some of these focus areas, not every half a mile, every two blocks, but really when you think globally about corridors like 40 Highway or State Avenue, um, you know, most suburbs and most parts of the country have too much retail zoning in general. I think the idea is to try to concentrate some of the uh, land use potential at focus areas like like the three you talked about or we've talked about and if, to really soup those up and not try to just spread it like peanut butter up and down a corridor. So that's kind of the main idea, but we haven't studied those two in depth. And if you want to add any comments on that. Um, Mr. Mayor and uh, Councilman Love said a very good question. I think at the very beginning, I don't know if you can flip all the way back, Britt, to that the map showing the whole 40 highway corridor, but uh, Kansas City Independence Lease Summit and Blue Springs all looked at the map and decided, yeah, exactly. Each of these four nodes kind of represent a little bit different character of the whole 40 highway, and that we th we saw, you know, maybe 40 in Noland is is a pretty good representation, perhaps, of 40 and seven. So what comes out of the 40 in Noland design and, and discussion and uh, and plans, uh, perhaps we could translate that then pretty easily over to 40 and seven. So I was, was trying to kind of best, you know, bang for the buck, try to, uh, you know, look at each of those different types of densities and, and, and development types and, you know, what can we get out of each of those four nodes that we can then translate um, throughout the whole corridor. 40 and uh, Adams Dairy is really kind of unique. It's kind of almost greenfield, you know, edge of town, but it has this industrial heritage. So it's really unlike anything else on the corridor. I guess you could... You could argue the stuff by 435 with its light industrial flavor is like that, but it, they certainly don't have a nice big, uh, you know, university research park next to it either, right? right? So, you know, Nolan and 40 is probably the most similar to the strip development of the 1960s, 70s, 80s along the quarter, but none of the stuff is totally copy-paste. Uh, Nolan has a lot bigger footprint of areas that are either vacant or probably could become vacant in the future, and 40 and 7 is a little tighter, I'd say, yeah. Great, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Councilman Barman. <clears throat> I want to add my thank you as well for the presentation, all the work that leads up to it. Mm -hmm. But right now, I want to skip over to our Public Works Director, Mr. Sandy. Uh, I'm just curious if we have long-range plans for our Public Works facility along uh, Sunnyside School Road that shows here in two options, that becoming single-family homes and other things. So <laughs> I see a smile on your face, Chris. Can you answer that? At this point, we do not. Um, we'll have to wait and see if this actually comes to fruition. We are kind of, we do like our location because we are central in the, the city. We'll Absolutely. We'll wait and see what, sure. what pans out for us. Well, if that happened, Councilman Fowler and I would definitely love to have it on the south end of town. So I uh, <laughs> you know, just, just thought I'd add that in. But no, this is great potential, and that's what it is. It's a projection mm -hmm. into the future, and we need to do more of that, like MIP and other things. So thank you again. Mm -hmm. Well, in the comment on the public works, you know, we talk with city staff, and there's a lot of internal, well, game playing or kind of thinking about well, how this be perceived, you know, long term in terms of different properties there. The school property was agreed that, that would probably be there for a long, long time. But, you know, a lot of other communities take public works facilities if they're in the middle of some redevelopment area, and those are often, you know, cities have a hard time getting a hold of property and don't get in that game of acquiring property. It's usually an easy way to get acreage put into a deal, and so I think that's part of the thought, you know. Yeah, so all I could really say is if we could, um, if you all want to go on and take the survey and tell your constituents about it, it'd be great, and we'd love to see as many of you all at the final meeting, which we're 
looking at the week of March 11th and hopefully nailing down the date here the next day or so. Any other questions or comments? If not, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. And uh, certainly, Council, take all that on advisement. Mm -hmm. and, and certainly, we can uh, encourage our constituents to take a look at it and express their opinions on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That brings us to mayoral announcements. We have another council meeting before the Mayor's State of the City address, which will be Thursday, February 21st at Adams Point Conference Center during the Chamber Luncheon. That's not till the 21st, so we will meet one more time before that happens. February is considered Black History Month, and I'm going to start out with the person that's known as the father of Black History Month, Carter G. Woodson. He was born in 1875 and died in 1950. And it states that he was one of the first African Americans to receive a doctorate from Harvard. But he began this in 1926. And the quote that I have from him today, again, he started as Negro History Week. And he ver eventually emerged as Black History Month. But his quote is, we should emphasize not Negro history, but the Negro in history. What we need is not a history of selected races or nations, but the history of the world void of national bias, race hate, and religious prejudice, end quote. And also I'm going to share with you, if she were still alive today, today would be her birthday, 100 years, Rosa Parks. And, she, and I quote, I have learned over the years that when one's mind is made up, this diminishes fear, end quote. Those are my mayoral announcements, thoughts to ponder, and I have nothing else, no visitor's cards, so I would accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, aye. 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 All same sign, we adjourn. I'm the executive session. Oh, oh okay. okay.